Hey friends. So today is one of those days when it's kind of like the nitty gritty of self reflection. Uh, somehow becomes comes to the fore. We get into the get into get into the real stuff, and so I was I was sitting this morning, and it it was it was uh, during meditation, I think, but it kind of came out of the previous. Uh, I was kind of my mind was kind of surfing as I was doing my um, physical routine before that, and what showed up is this r really ugly attribute or or um, tendency and basically it amounts to there's a part of me that I can witness enjoying or not, not really enjoying, but um, feeling good when other people fail. And you can see why it feels like a pretty ugly thing to see in oneself and <clears throat> you know it reminded me of something that Brene Brown said in her um, in her uh, Netflix series which is that if our self-worth is attached to our accomplishments, then we will, then we will feel good when others fail. And I had to parse it a little bit to kind of like really get to the heart of what that means. Because on one level, it's like, well, that doesn't really stand up because why could why couldn't I be invested in my own accomplishments and still feel good when other people do well? And of course, many of us probably have that experience and have had that experience, <clears throat> but that's a different kind of attachment to our accomplishments. The kind of attachment that I think she's talking about and which kind of showed up for me this morning, which showed up as relevant this morning, is my self-worth is tied to some external um, status, some sort of achievement or uh, set of circumstances that that I that somehow to me represent my status and that status determines my self-worth. And so if that's the case, then my self-worth is always relative. It's always relative to my status. And that means that whether my status goes up or someone else's goes down, Either way, my self-worth is growing, is gaining, is gaining in status. And now most of us are probably not this binary about the way that our self-worth is attached to our accomplishments. I mean, I think this is a, you know, I'm outlining it sort of almost in theory um, to get my head around the mechanism of how this works. But but and and most of us probably wouldn't wouldn't ever be so kind of um i mean you'd have to be pretty you have to be pretty unself aware to be that invested 
And yet, I look at myself and I see what my mind does in certain situations. I get this little glimmer of joy or light when some when I when I witness someone else experiencing a difficulty or something. And I and I and I and I because I am a, a reflective person, I go, why? Where is this coming from? And and the conclusion is, well, my self-worth is attached to my accomplishments. So it's totally, it's inevitable almost that it'll, that it'll, that this is going to, that, that I'm going to experience this. The ego doesn't really know another way. And what also kind of showed up in thinking about this is that, because the first, the first impulse is to, is to go, oh God, what a, what a horrible person I am. My God, I take delight in other people's pain. I'm a psychopath. I'm, I should, they should commit me. But, but, but I don't actually think, I mean, I don't actually think that this, that this feeling in and of itself is something that's that unique to me or even necessarily that's that problematic. Because another thing Brene Brown said in her, um, in her lecture series is that we will inevitably and inherent, inherently compare ourselves to others. That's, it's human nature. We can act like we don't, we can do a bunch of self-help work and not and try to not compare ourselves to others and and distance ourselves from the conclusions we draw by comparison to others but we but ultimately we we are it is in our nature it's hardwired into our brain to compare ourselves to others so in other words that relative status thing is almost like hardware in our brain that we can't change. What we can do is not identify with it, is gain as much distance as we can to put a gap. Again, this is where I come back to meditation. Put a gap between our consciousness and this mechanism so that there's space to observe it and not and not let it drive our action or even our thinking um and that's a that's good news it's it's good news that that's possible because it means we don't need to it, it means that the fact that it's happening doesn't mean that we're a horrible human being it just means we are, it just means we're a human being. It means it's part of the nature of a human being. But the other thing we can do, and this is, I think, a function of long-term practice and, 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 and a long-term habit, building up a long-term habit of creating some distance between ourselves and this mechanism, the uh, the thing we can do is not attach our self worth to that sense of status. If we can get that, if we can get those two things separated, it's almost like having a superpower. Because now we don't need to win that game. It's also incredibly liberating because, my God, who wants to be? constantly in compare who 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 wants to be constantly in comparison to everybody else in the world i mean is anybody going to come out on top in that in that scenario isn't there always somebody who's slightly ahead of us in something i'm sure that even elon musk and bill gates and you know all the all the all the biggest most powerful richest people in the world probably have areas of their life where they're like man i really wish i could be like so you know they're they're, they're lacking in some way we're all gonna have that so in other words it's not a game that 
that really provides lasting stability or, 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 or a deep kind of unshakable sense of self-worth. That has to come from somewhere else. And so again, kind of, I guess, luckily, or, you know, as, as, it, it, as fate would have it, this was coming to me during meditation this morning. So it was like the perfect time to kind of, oh, ee, ee, ugly, I don't know, ugh, ugliness. But I, but I was like, oh, wait a minute. Let's not look away. Let's see what this is. And then I was able to, uh, to con kind of construct the um, a scaffold for what's really going on here, and you know, and it's good to know this about ourselves. You know, it's not it's it's it's, it's good to know that this is how we work. It's good to know that we're capable of that. You know, because it's it would be really dangerous actually to think we weren't capable of that. To think we weren't the kind of person who would take delight in someone else's pain. I just can't imagine being that kind of person. You know, it's good to not have, it's, it's good to not be so blind to the way our own mind works. Because, I mean, that's how we, that's how our awareness grows. That's how our empathy grows. That's how our capacity to offer grace in circumstances when someone else might be manifesting this pattern in a way that is really ugly, but that but we won't be repelled by it. We won't have to look away or pretend or or judge. We can embrace their humanity. You know, humanity unfortunately doesn't only mean the beautiful parts. <laughs> humanity means what does it mean to be this thing? What is it? What is this? This is a. This is a. This is a mechanism this is a machine it's more than that but it's also a hardwired uh, kind of like it's a piece of hardware what does it mean our humanity you know so understanding ourselves gives us a chance to be able to also extend some grace to others so that's where i've landed after reflecting on this relatively ugly thing which showed up in the mirror this morning Love you folks. Thanks for watching. I appreciate you. This conversation means the world to me. Thank you. Have a wonderful day. See you tomorrow.